Hi everyone, this is Arvind from Mind Magics, and today I welcome you all to this amazing session on Vue.js interview questions. These questions have been categorized into two. The first category is the questions which are for the freshers, and the second category is the questions which are for the experienced candidates. So that is the whole agenda for this video. So without any further delay, let's get started with our first question. So the first question over here is, what exactly is Vue.js? So guys, before answering this question, let me tell you, Vue.js and Vue.js is one and the same thing. Okay, so if you talk about the definition of Vue.js, so it is a framework for creating user interfaces that are built on JavaScript. So it is a framework that is very much progressive. It is responsible for the view layer of an application. It may be used to create single page applications as well. And it is a framework that handles high level of issues like fast DOM rendering, reactive state management tools, client side routing and server side rendering as well. So this was a quick definition of UJS. The next question is what exactly is the prop component? So data is passed from the parent component to the child component using the prop component. A component can have as many props as it wants. The prop is a custom attribute that becomes a property of a component instance when a value is supplied to it. From parent to a child component, a component prop forms one way down binding. When the parent's property changes, it affects the child as well, but not the other way around. The next question is, in Vue.js, what is reactivity? So when you change the data value, the page is updated to reflect the changes. Data properties and computed properties in Vue are reactive. Vue.js services are not reactive. The next question is, describe the lifecycle hooks in Vue.js. So lifecycle hooks are functions that each and every view instance runs through. So each view has eight lifecycle hooks and those hooks are before create, created, before mount, mounted, before updated, updated, before destroy and destroy. The next question is describe the distinction between V show and V if. The items are shown or hidden using the V show and V if. However, there are a few differences between them. The V if directive is used to render a block conditionally. It features lazy behavior, which means that if the initial condition is false, the block will not be rendered until it changes. During the condition change, V if destroys and recreates the elements. When your condition does not frequently change at runtime, you can use the V if directive because it has a lower initial render cost, but a higher toggling cost. The V show directive can also be used to render a block conditionally. The element is always rendered by V show. Instead of removing the element or block the DOM, it simply sets the CSS show attribute. It has a high initial rendering cost, but a low toggle cost. So use the V show directive if you need to toggle frequently. The next question is explain how to use parent. So in the child component, parent is used to retrieve the parent component instance. It's more challenging to test and debug the program and you can't figure out where the mutation comes from. View also has a child function that returns a child component instance similar to its parent. The next question is describe the component of a single file. SFCs or single file components are similar to the other components in that they are self contained in their own files. And now if you talk about the benefits of SFCs, so the first point over here is global definitions. So this refers to the fact that all of the SFCs are registered globally and given unique names. The next point is robust templates. Instead of using a single template property like other components, you can easily create the template code in SFCs. The next point is CSS support. SFCs allows you to apply CSS to the component itself. And last but not the least, you have support for preprocessors. So preprocessors like Babel, SAS, 
and others can simply be used in SFCs. The next question is, what are the most essential elements of the state management pattern? The primary components of the state management are state, view and actions. So if you talk about state, so our application is driven by the state, which is the source of the truth. The view is nothing more than a declarative state mapping. And if you talk about actions, so actions are the various ways in which the state could change due to user input from the view. The next question is, how do you verify if a mutation has occurred? So it will be easy to test mutations because they are simply functions that rely only on their arguments. You must keep mutations contained within your store. The mutations should also be exported as a name export apart from the default export. The next question is, what exactly is the map state helper? So creating a computed property whenever we wish to use the store's state property or a getter in Vuex application will be repetitive and lengthy, especially if a component requires many state properties. The next question is, is using variables for mutation types required? So the answer to this question is no, it is not at all required. However, you may have noticed that state management frameworks like Flux and Redux employ constants for mutation types. This is just a preference, but it is beneficial to use tooling like linters and putting all the constants in a single file lets your collaborators see what modifications are allowed across the entire applications at a glance. The next question is, is it possible to use style components in Vue.js? React.js applications typically employ style components. Vue.js style components library is available under the styled component library if you wish to use it for the Vue.js applications. Vue.js styled components is a JavaScript module that helps you style your Vue.js projects. The next question is, what are the benefits of using Vue CLI? So there are numerous benefits or features of using Vue CLI, like scaffolding the interactive projects and extensive collection of official plugins that integrate the top front-end tools. Vue.js projects may be created and managed using an entire GUI. With Vue CLI, rapid prototyping with zero configuration and built on the top of Webpack and expandable via plugins, Vue CLI is a runtime dependency. The next question is, what is instant prototyping and how does it work? With Vue Serve, which is similar to Vue Create and Vue Build commands in the Vue CLI, Instant prototyping is known as fast prototyping with just a single star dot view file. The next question is in Vue.js, what is the purpose of next tick? So after the data has been set and the DOM has been changed, the next tick method is simply a convenient mechanism to perform a function. The next question is, why is it necessary for the component data to be a function? So instead of just supplying the object, the component data must be a function. This is because each instance requires a copy of the returned data object. Otherwise, data changes in one component instance will affect the data in all of the other instances. The next question is, in view router, what are the navigation guards? So view navigation routers guards protect navigations by diverting or canceling them. The three possible techniques to plug into router navigations are global, per root and in component. The next question is, what are mixins? So mixins are versatile approach to sharing reusable view component functionality. Any component choices can be included in a mixin object. When a component employs a mixin, all of the mixins options are mixed into the components own. The next question is, what are the advantages of utilizing Vue.js mixins? So mixins are used by developers in Vue.js to flexibly distribute reusable features. Mixins can have any number of component options and mixins can be kept in one location so that all of the components that use them benefit at the same time. The next question is list the types of directive available in Vue.js. So guys, as you can see on the screen, these are the directives which are supported in Vue.js, general directives, 
literal directives, empty directives, and custom directives. The next question is, what is view loader? So view loader is a web packed loader plugin that allows us to develop single file components in the view format. Template, script, and style are the three sections of a single component file. Webpack can extract and process each section using distinct loader modules like the SASS or the SCSS loaders thanks to the view loader module. As a result of the configuration, we can easily author apps using .view files. Static assets can also be regarded as module dependencies with the view loader module and webpack loaders can be used to process them. It also enables hot reloading when developing. The next question is, what is virtual DOM? So the document object model or DOM is an interface that allows languages like JavaScript to interact and change HTML documents. So nodes in a tree represent the elements and the interface lets us manipulate them. This interface, however, comes with a cost and the page will be slowed down by a considerable number of persistent DOM operations. So basically, Vue overcomes this problem by storing a virtual representation of the document's structure in memory, where a virtual node or a V node represents the nodes in the document's structure. When manipulation is required, the computations and operations are executed in memory on the virtual DOM rather than the real DOM. So this is faster and it allows the virtual DOM algorithm to determine the most efficient method of updating the actual DOM structure. This is then applied to the actual DOM tree after it has been computed. This improves the performance, which is why the virtual DOM based frameworks like Vue and React have become so much popular. The next question is, what is Vue plugin? So developers can create and add global level functionality to Vue via a Vue plugin. This can be used to add globally accessible methods and properties to an application and assets, options, mixings, and other custom APIs. Viewfire, which is a view plugin that adds Firebase specific methods and binding to the entire application is an example of view plugin. The next question is, what is the best way to maintain the state in an extensive view application and why it is recommended? So managing state becomes tough when an application increases in size both in terms of features, code base, and employing an external network of downstream props and upstream events is not sensible. It becomes vital to transfer state management to a central management system in such a situation. Vuex is the official state management library and a suggested paradigm for the saving states centrally in Vue ecosystem. Vuex allows for the preservation of a central state. And Vuex is used by components as a reactive data store, which updates as the state changes. The same and central state store can be used by multiple and unrelated components as well. The next question is, how can the performance of Vue.js be improved? So your Vue application may become delayed for various reasons. For example, you're relying on too many other third-party libraries that are either too large or can be misused. You have a large number of unoptimized and compressed photos. You don't use lazy loading to load your images. And to reduce the redundant port, you aren't reusing functionalities across your program. You have a lot of pages and you want to load them all at once. So these are some of the things which can decrease the performance of Vue.js. And in order to increase the performance, you can ignore all of the following points. So guys, with this, we have come to the end of this session on Vue.js interview questions. I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. If at all you have any queries or doubts related to this session, then you can post them in the comment section and we will try to resolve them as early as possible. So guys, thank you so much for being with us and I wish you all the very best for your upcoming interview.